Hello, and welcome to our Savior's Lutheran Church here in Fort Capel, Saskatchewan. I especially want to thank all of you for your prayers on my behalf and on behalf of the congregation recently. As you might be able to tell from my voice, uh, I'm still recovering from some of the symptoms from COVID, and so I hope that uh, you may be blessed and served by this shorter service today as compared to our usual uh, offerings. I will also link in the description some hymns to go along with our reading and our sermon that may hopefully edify you and build you up in this faith that we share. With that said, thank you and welcome and we hope to see you soon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Gospel for the second Sunday after Epiphany is from St. John, the first chapter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses and the law by also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's Gospel reading focuses on the calling of Philip and Nathaniel. Really, however, it focuses much more on Nathaniel's call, as Philip's is quite straightforward. The Lord says to him with his efficacious word, Follow me. And Philip, moved by the Spirit and Word of God, follows Jesus. And then, as a follower of Jesus, Philip does what is now natural to him, having been made new by the Spirit of God. And so Philip, with his new, with his new spiritual impulses, goes to find his friend Nathaniel, also called Bartholomew in the other Gospels, to tell him that we have found him whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. Nathanael is at first skeptical, and rightly so, for the prophets said that the Messiah would come from Bethlehem, not Nazareth. For Nathanael did not know that Jesus was actually born in Bethlehem. However, he decides to go and see. Then the Lord greets him. Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. There is a lot going on here, even if we don't see it at first. But the rest of the reading helps us to understand. For here Jesus compares Nathanael to Jacob, that is, with Israel. Jacob's birth name means supplanter. He is associated, in his early life especially, with deceit. That is, seen in how he gets his birthright. While it is true that the Lord told Rebecca that the older would serve the younger, how it came about was through deceit, where Jacob pretended to be his older brother Esau in order to get the blessing from his father Isaac. All of this is surrounded by deceit. But even though Jacob was a flawed individual, a sinful man, yet he was the one whom our Lord chose to carry out the promise of the Messiah. Thus our Lord greets Nathanael as an Israelite indeed, that is a true Israelite, one who is truly a child of Jacob, not only by blood, but by sharing his faith, his faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and 
Jacob and his promise of the Messiah through their lineage. And to show his sincerity, our Lord adds, in whom there is no deceit. The Lord tells us and his other disciples there is no deceit in the thing. He is one who does not try to deceive neither man nor God. He is one who, because of his faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, lives in an honest way with all, neither trying to defraud or pull a past him from his neighbors, nor trying to hide his sinful self from God, but rather, like the publican in our Lord's parable of the Pharisee and the publican, confesses to God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Now with this, our Lord desires, and this is what our Lord desires, from all his disciples, to not put on any pretense before God or man, for our Lord sees us at all times and knows us, just as he saw and knew Daniel before Philip called to him. We must be honest with ourselves and acknowledge that we are sinners, for we know the depths of the sin within ourselves. Even as we trust and hope in Christ, we know the sin of lies within. And it does us no good to try to deceive others, let alone God, regarding us. Our Lord knows our condition. He knows our faults, and he does not want us to try to hide them from himself or others, but rather to confess them, that we may be forgiven, to come to those we sin and confess to them our sins against them, putting ourselves at their mercy, to go to God in prayer or in confession, and to plead to and to plead him for his mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ. For we know the sin within us, and we know what we have done. We know we have not lived for lies, nor can we. But we can come to God for mercy, because he is gracious and merciful, and abounding in steadfast love. And he has promised to forgive our sins for the sake of the innocent sufferings and death of our Lord Jesus Christ on our behalf. For he is the one of whom Moses in the law, and also the prophets write about. The Messiah, the Lamb of God, who takes away our sins and makes peace with God. And this is what our Lord alludes to when he says to Nathaniel that the, and the other disciples, after his confession of faith, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Having already brought to the mind of Nathaniel and the other disciples, their father Jacob, our Lord reminds them of his dream of the ladder. For when Jacob was running away from his brother Esau, he saw a vision while he slept of a ladder going from earth to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood above it. At this place, the Lord promised Jacob that through his offspring all the world would be blessed. And Jacob awoke. He said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. But what does it mean for our Lord to say that the angels of God will be ascending and descending on the Son of Man? He is telling them, and us, that he is the fulfillment of this vision. He is both the fulfillment of the Lord's promise, that he is the offspring of Jacob, through whom all the nations will be blessed, but he is also the fulfillment of the latter. He is the mediator, between heaven and earth. He is the one who touches both heaven by virtue of his eternal generation from the Father and earth by virtue of the incarnation of the Virgin Mary. And touching both heaven and earth, our Lord Jesus Christ is the true mediator between the Lord God and sinful humanity. We see this most clearly in his crucifixion, where our Lord is suspended between heaven and earth, and there he fulfills the vision of Jacob's ladder, mediated between all sinful humanity by standing in our place before God and offering himself as the atonement for sin. And we also see by the signs that accompany his death, and also by his glorious resurrection, that the Father has accepted his sacrifice and mediation on our behalf. And today, our mediator, Jesus Christ, continues to intercede for us continues to bring us for God and God to us. For he always intercedes for us to the Father, 
please think before him his death, which cleanses us from our sins. He is to us the gate of heaven, through whom we enter into the Father's presence through our prayers, which he hears for the sake of his Son. And to us, our Lord Jesus Christ is the, brings the message of the gospel, the good news of salvation by grace through faith in him, through the reading and the preaching of the word. And because of this faith, he dwells with us and in us as he is promised. And with his presence and that of the Holy Spirit, he daily forgives and renews and sanctifies us, granting us a new good and spiritual impulses which cause us to daily repent, to daily turn to him for forgiveness, strength, and salvation, but also these impulses which cause us to reach out to our friends and our family in love, to serve them, and also to bring the same good news which we have received, just as Philip did in a family. And when we gather together, he opens to us the gates of heaven, so that when we commune together on his body and blood, trusting in his word and promise, we receive him who sits at the right hand of God, and are in the presence of angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, as we receive his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins and life and salvation. And he brings to us the assurance and the pledge that God himself is for us, that he has accomplished all that is necessary for our salvation, and that he himself has set up for us a mediator, that we may come into his presence and receive his good gifts which he loves to give, including that gift of life forevermore in his presence, in the new heavens and the new earth, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes again in glory. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together as our Lord is taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.